those of you who, who just joined us, welcome to this event in partnership uh, with the University of Liverpool Online. So uh, during this event, we'll give you a, co a comprehensive overview of what the programs are and uh, what you can study from the comfort of your own home. Uh, hopefully you will be able to make the most out of this event. So if you have any questions specifically about the student life, about the uh, online uh, learning platform, uh, please feel free to type away and we'll get to the questions after the main presentation. So without further ado, I would like to leave the floor to Ayam. And of course, if you have any questions, please let us know and we'll get to those after the event. Thank you so much. And Ayam, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for coming today. Um, I want to tell you a bit more about the university in general. Um, it's it's a red brick university, so it has some history. And um, it, the Russell Group institutions in the UK are the elite institutions. So they're the best unit, um, univer universities in the region. They might be like an Ivy League colleague in the States. Um, they're associated with a number of Nobel laureates, and they are rated quite highly across the international student uh, and student and staff feedback, as well as reputationally. Um, we've had over 10,000 students online through the university, and there's a network of a number of students and an alumni over many countries. So. As an international student or as a student in an online university, you'd be in really good company. And uh, of course, at postgraduate level, of course, meeting students in uh, at postgraduate level means that you maintain those relationships even beyond the programs of study. Can I have the next slide, please? So um, our programs are designed to be relatively flexible and to fit around your professional or other uh, community. Uh, things that you have going for you, other things, other commitments that you might have. Um, they're all part time and the programs here are all post um, postgraduate. Um, all of our programs are 100 percent online, so there's no expectation that you would visit a campus or have to get to travel at all. Um, and we really stress the notion that that students learn from themselves, uh, from each other, as well as the lecturers. So there's a peer learning element in all the programs that we design, and that's really Im embedded in the learning process that we develop. Um, the learning platform, as you will see later in the demonstration, uh, means that you can access the materials when you're ready to do so and uh, when you can engage with them in your time. And there's really high quality learning and teaching support. So we spend a lot of time on the academic team identifying members of lecture and staff and dissertation advisory staff who have a lot of experience already in their expert fields. Um, almost all of them have PhDs. And uh, you would be to actually working with some of the best lecturers and dissertation advisors in the UK. Could we have the next slide, please? So I'm going to talk a bit more about the subjects now. And uh, we have a range of subjects which are probably of interest to you um, in business and management, computing, uh, academic practice, which is, comes as the education heading, law, medicine and health studies and psychology. Um, and all our awards can also be taken at a lower level. You don't have to pursue a full master's. You could take a postgraduate certificate, which is about which is 60 credits at postgraduate level, a diploma, which is 120 credits. So that's everything but the dissertation. And then you can go for the full master's if you decide to. You can also decide to start on a certificate and see how things work and go on and then move up to a diploma and then the master's. So you can take things in steps. You don't have to sign up for the master's straight away. Next slide, please. So I'll talk now about the business and management programs that we run. We have eight programs. Seven of them are taught in the sense that, um, that if you don't have to have an awful lot of management experience before you come in, but our MBA requires that you've already working in a professional environment and so that you're taking on additional roles in management. But if, if, you've, if you're a new graduate, the, any of the other seven programs would be quite good for you. Um, the digital marketing obviously is uh, hones in on the marketing skills that you require in the new digital environment. Um, finance and investment management is would be of interest if you're interested in, in joining the field and learning more about how you might uh, augment your corporate structure by offering ad financial advice in those areas. Our healthcare leadership is designed for individuals who are working in a healthcare environment and want to understand how leadership and management can impact and enhance their own professional practice. 
international human resource management, of course, will be covering uh, human resource management policies, um, staff development, uh, how you can build in training programs across an organization, as well as the important legal requirements. Our general management is for students who might not be sure which area they might be going, wanting to, to pursue, they don't want to specialize quite yet. So it gives you a broader background, but it will give you that uh, those leadership and management uh, theories and practices that you can build into place from the day that you start with us. As I, the Master of Business Management Administration, sorry, requires you to work, um, already be working in the field. But that means that you'll be working with other individuals who are already working at that level. Um, and the peer learning environment is especially strong in that program. So, um, so we really do uh, expect students to work together in groups and to work together uh, to put together projects and that actually have an impact immediately. Project management will is really good for anyone who might be working in any of the sectors because uh, the project management is a really important element in any business. And uh, you don't necessarily have to think about a project, but the, the ideals and the theories that underpin that project management will be really important in, in all sorts of sectors, particularly the IT sector. And then our sports business and management is really popular if you're working in a sports environment and you want to then take that step up to perhaps join a management team or to uh, to think about marketing or how you might enhance your own sports business practice. Next slide, please. We also have a range of computing science programs. Um, some of them require that you have a background in computing, and that's for the artificial intelligence, the big data analytics, the cybersecurity, and information systems management. So we would expect that you already are perhaps working in the field or you have a degree in that area or a, a, a science area. That means that programming or any mathematical elements will already you'll already be familiar with. But if you don't have a computing science background at all, then the computer science conversion or the data science and artificial intelligence conversion programs are ideal for you. So um, the, when you start the programs, uh, and either way, whether you take the computing with with a background or the new programs we have enough electives that you can actually make a lot of choices as you move through the program so they start out giving you a basis but then you can move on to the areas which interest you and the menu of electives is crosses all the programs so if you are particularly interested in programming for example you, know, you could pursue those elements but if you're pursuing if you're more interested in reports and things like that, then you might be more interested in some of the other modules that we offer. So, um, so they are pretty flexible and, uh, and our admissions advisors can certainly help you to choose the program that's best for you. Next slide, please. So um, under our education section, we have the program in academic practice. And this is actually aimed at people who are teaching. So it's thinking about how learning and teaching works, um, what theories and practices you might put into place immediately to enhance your own teaching practice, what kinds of things your learners might need to uh, understand or kinds of ways that you might engage better with your learners. And um, we offer this at postgraduate certificate in two pathways. One of them is accredited by the Advanced HE, which is a UK body that um, gives accreditation internationally. Um, and the other uh, pathway is almost exactly the same, but it doesn't have the accreditation with it from the outset. But that means that you don't have to have um, you don't have to be actually teaching in a learning environment at higher, at higher education in order to pursue the program. So. Um, of the, so in a certificate, we have four modules. If you take the accredited pathway, you you start you should be already working in a higher education, learning and teaching environment. If you take the unaccredited um, pathway, then the first module is prepares you for the program, but then the other three modules are the same as for the accredited pathway. So the, the learning that you would uh, achieve is pretty much the same. Once you get to the diploma and the master's level, everything's the same. So again, there's a real emphasis on peer learning. There's a real emphasis on group work and people working together. So there's good access from your lecturer, but there's also really good access from the cohort of students that you'll be working with. Next slide, please. 
We've just now launched the International Business Law Program. So at postgraduate level, this is designed for students from any background. So you might have a law background already, and you might want to be looking to extend that in terms of a business back, uh, experience, or you might want not have a law background, and you might want to get some kind of law knowledge. So the modules are designed to, to accommodate both kinds of students. Um, and again, we'll be asking students to, to learn together um, to have that peer learning element, and it's um, um, the, pro the the program itself is very very popular. So um, so we would expect to see a number of students up from a number of different backgrounds in that area, and in fact, law welcomes students from different backgrounds because it helps to make sure that the the subject remains fresh and current. Next slide, slide please. And we have two health programs. The healthcare leadership, as I already mentioned, because we've seen that on the management side, um, it is for people who are working in a healthcare environment and want management or leadership skills or experience to augment their professional basis. Um, but we also have the Master in Public Health for professionals who want uh, to get that further qualification in public health. Of course, with the recent pandemic and the other um, health related environments, public health is becoming much more of an issue. And having a background in that has been really, really helpful for all sorts of practitioners. In fact, some of the lectures we have have, have been have said that public health has actually changed their entire professional environment and entire and, and outlook because they're clinicians themselves. But thinking about the clinical work that they do within a social aspect is really, really enlightening. And they would recommend a public health degree for anyone who's working in the medical field because it opens up that whole vision, that wider vision of what health is about and what kind of impact health systems have on a general population. Next slide, please. And the last program I'd like to talk about is the psychology. We have three programs in psychology at postgraduate level. The psychology conversion is for students who don't have a psychology degree already. And this is uh, accredited by the British Psychological Society. So that's one of the, the best ways if you want to work in the field to, to take the qualification to get that the, um, the things that are necessary to work in the field. Um, the mental health psychology and the organizational business psychology are also very popular, but they're not accredited. Uh, none of these require psychology at um, in a first degree, although it might be helpful. But um, if you are interested, again, talk to our, our admissions teams and they'll be able to advise you best on which program is best for you. In, the, in those programs, the first four modules are the same. So there is some options to think about what you might want to do to, to experience altogether, to see what other students are doing on the program, and then to make a final decision. Next slide, please. So if you want more information about those, then our admissions team can help you with that. I'd be happy to help you with that. I'm sure you, uh, my details can be found. And uh, I'll be looking through the chat. And um, when, you, when you see the, the, um, the next part, I'll try to answer the questions that you might have put in the chat uh, during, the, during the demonstration or another time during this session. So, um, so thank you very much. Thank you for listening. And I look forward to answering any questions in the moment. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ida. And I think Arrej is next. And of course, to all participants who just joined in, welcome. Uh, if you have any questions about the available uh, online masters, we are here to help you. And please feel free to type it into the Q&A box. Ari, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you so much, Lavinia. Um, I'm going to share my screen quickly, if that's OK. Um, I th think you might need to stop sharing so that I can do so. Thank you very much. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Anrich. I'm the learning technology manager that manages um, the, the learning environment that I'm about to show you. So. This demonstration is just to give you an overview of uh, what to expect as a student in this environment and um, what it might look like to study one of our modules. Um, this is currently a demo module, so uh, you won't see any live student data at this point, but it will give you an overview of how we structure our materials on the platform and some of the features that are available to you as a student. 
Um, just to mention that our platform is built on Moodle. Uh, Moodle is an open source learning environment. It's a, a very popular and very robust learning environment. So if um, if you have come across this environment before, I'm sure um, you'll feel very at home in this environment that we have uh, here for you today. So yes, just to quickly take you through um, the structure of our of our modules. So um, in this case, we are looking at managing human resources, and you'll see we are currently on the the homepage of this uh, this module here. So every every module homepage has some introductory text for you as the student. It gives you some of the module's aims and some of the um, outcomes and what you'd be expected to understand by the completion or the end of this module. Um, so there's a very brief overview of what that um, what the module will look like um, in this area. We also have a module announcements area. So you will have a lecturer who who works alongside you in this module, and uh, the announce the announcement space is the area where they post announcements to you as the student. Um, talking about the lecturer, I'll quickly hop over to the lecturer office um, page. So every module that you will take on our programs have a lecturer assigned. So they'll be your your key contact person. Uh, with regards to your studies and um, they are always available uh, by email address so we always provide you uh, their email address as, as well as a zoom meeting room and some indicative office hours so if you wish to have a face-to-face -face meeting with your lecturer there's always the opportunity to email them and ask them for for a time um, or you could um, you could pop into their their meeting room uh, in their allocated office hours so that's a uh, it's very reassuring as a student uh, having someone that's there alongside and that can always answer answer some of the, the 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 critical questions that you might have about the studies that you're currently working through. Uh, we also have a Q and A discussion forum uh, within the lecturer office space. Uh, so if you wish to post any questions to your lecturer, you can use that space as well. Um, our lecturers actively monitor those areas and they reply um, they reply in due course and it's it's um, an area that you could use if you if you would like to use that instead of the email route or um, using their zoom meeting room. Then every uh, every module also has an additional resources section. So in this area um, is content or well, any, any 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 information that we need to provide you as a student uh, that uh, you would need for the remainder of the module essentially. Uh, in here we have a bit of a social space a student lounge so um, you can use that as a social area with your other your other colleagues or your peers within this module and you can um, start discussion forums there with one another uh, in this area we also provide you with a grading criteria page so every every module that you that you take will have a series of assessed components uh, this page is quite a, 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 use, a useful one because it includes the weighting of each of those components so you can see how each of these um, assignments um, make up your final grade for your assignment. So in this case, we can see there's two discussion forum assignments uh, that are both count for 15% and an individual assignment, which uh, counts for 70%. Um, so always useful uh, to see those areas there. Then every every module uh, has a dedicated reading list. Um, so we, we do make it quite straightforward for you as students to access the the learning materials that you that you that you need to access. So all all the weeks of um, all the weeks of reading and 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 uh, various materials that uh, that you need to access for your module are hosted in a dedicated platform that we that we manage and we keep up to date and we ensure that links are always working and such. Um, and it's yeah, it's very useful as these links then link out to the university library and provide you with a, a seamless way of accessing um, the the resources for your module. Um, it is also worth noting that we provide a single sign-on solution for all students, so you are provided with a, a university uh, credential, a set of credentials, and those credentials are used to access the learning environment, the university library, um, and any other additional resources that are hosted by the University of Liverpool. Um, those will all, all be, um, uh, you'll, you'll be able to access all of those resources using that single set of credentials, which is which is quite useful. Um, then quickly into the module schedule page, uh, every module has a, a schedule page, so it, we, we give you an idea of when your assignments are due, um, and as well as if, if a module does contain any live synchronous seminars, we would also include that, include that information here. So in the case of this uh, specific module, uh, this module does have a few live synchronous sessions, and in those live sessions, the lecturer uh, within this module would then present a specific topic. Um, at a specific time. However, if uh, because of your geographic location, you aren't able to attend at that specific time, we also provide the recordings for those those different sessions uh, in the announcements area in every module uh, that you are taking. So you don't need to worry about necessarily missing a live session because you could always uh, watch it back at a later at a later time. Um, so that is very useful. 
Uh, these dates also populate within your student calendar. So within your student dashboard, you, you, you have a calendar that you can reference and see when your assignments are due. So also very helpful there. Um, I will skip over the formative feedback journal, not very important right now. Um, then I'll quickly go to this e core ebook section. So uh, when a module has specific textbooks that are, are poignant for that specific module, we will um, we'll link to those in this ebook section. And you are able then to click on the, the button below the ebook to access that specific book. And it will open up either in the University of Liverpool Library um, or in another third party resource called Vital Source. And you can access the textbooks there. And we uh, always try our best to provide uh, textbooks in accessible formats uh, for, for students from all, from all backgrounds and such. Um, then I'll quickly take you through uh, perhaps one or two weeks of study, just so that you understand what, the, what a week might look like, for instance. So um, every week has some introductory text so that you have an overview of what you'll be studying within that week. Uh, and below that, there are a series of activities that you that you need to complete uh, for for that specific week. So um, the first activity for this week is a lecture cast. Um, so a lecture cast, I would say, is a is a almost like a campus based lecture, but we have converted what would be a lecture into a series of multimedia components within our online environment. So if I launch one of our lecture casts, um, it, it will open a new window. And in this case, the lecture cast covers a very specific topic. So this lecture cast is the role of human resource strategy. And as you can see, I've already been working, working my way through this material. So um, there's the, a resume button here. And if I click on resume, I, I, I pick up where I left off in this module. Um, uh, in this lecture course specifically, and um, in this space, there there will be a variety of different types of uh, content. There'll be some reading materials, there'll be some video, perhaps a, some audio, a blog, maybe a, a check your knowledge type question, which I'll get to shortly. Um, but we have a series of videos um, within these lecture casts, and the author who has created this content um, is, is it presents that content to you, and uh, we we have um, essentially created video content that walks you through different concepts. So. There'll be some anima animated uh, diagrams and, and interesting ways that we've 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 interpreted the materials uh, for the module. So as you as you work through these different sections, um, you you will see a variety of different types of multimedia. Each when we do have video and audio content, we always provide a transcript for accessibility reasons. But also you have the option to download those transcripts and read them at a later date if you wish. Um, so I'll quickly click, click through. As you can see, another video. With its, uh, with its accompanying transcript, uh, as well as potentially some reading material here. And I'll quickly jump to the end of the um, the end of the lecture cast to the check your knowledge section. So in this case, there is a there are three questions uh, at the end of this lecture cast, and um, students are asked to complete these questions uh, to complete the activity. And in this case, there's a drag and drop activity. So you would align a different concept to uh, a, a different area on the, on the right-hand side there. We also have a, a variety of different question types. Uh, we do multiple choice and um, you know true false style questions here. So just an opportunity to test whether you've understood the material and um, you'll, you'll find those throughout all the lecture costs that you study um, through. So in this case, that, that, that was the first activity for the week, which is the lecture cost. Um, in this in this module specifically, there are three lecture costs that might might not be the case for every module that you take, but um, there are three in this case. I won't go through the the rest there. I'll, I'll move on to the the activities for for this first week. Um, so in the first week, uh, we have some additional activities as well in this module. So uh, a lot of the uh, many of the first weeks have uh, introduction introductory areas. So this would be a space for you to introduce yourself as a as a student and. Um, you you can add to this discussion forum by clicking on add a new discussion forum topic, and uh, typically um, students will use the space to um, you know give a brief overview about perhaps um, you know uh, what career path they're on and a little bit more about themselves, perhaps some interests and such, and then um, that really does start the conversation and creates this in inclusive uh, student community where you where you are talking to your your fellow peers with this, within the environment. Um, then we have a second activity here, which is also a discussion forum. However, in this case, it's a collaborative discussion forum. Um, so this is really where you start getting into the meat of, uh, of, of the module and you start doing some learning. So in this case, we provide you with a, a discussion forum uh, prompt. And then uh, this discussion forum runs over one week. So we, we, we give you a bit of an indication of when uh, your discussion forum posts are due. So in this case, on the Friday. Uh, of of the fourth day of the module and the Monday, which is the seventh day of the module, and um, so you would then contribute to that discussion forum over here. 
also to note that once you've completed a, a, an assignment or an activity, you can mark that activity as done. Uh, and that would also update your dashboard and you are able to you are able to track your completion um, uh, of your module uh, as you as you work through the content on the module uh, throughout your module. So you can always gain an understanding of, OK, I'm you know 50 or 60 percent through the content for the entire pro uh, for the entire module. Um, as mentioned earlier, this this module does contain synchronous uh, synchronous seminar. So there's a live a live element to this module. Uh, and in this case, when there is a uh, a live uh, a live seminar, we we might we may provide you with some additional reading. But um, in this case, we're providing you with the link to the module schedule page, where you can access the link to that live seminar uh, in the module. So I'll quickly jump back to the activities. Final final activity for this week is uh, reading. So we we uh, highlight a few uh, uh, journals which uh, which you might find interesting in this module, and then you'll see here is a reading list page. So if I click on that reading list page. Uh, we have a few references here, so we have some recommended reading and we have some um, further reading essentially. So when you are studying, we, we you would typically be expected to complete the recommended reading at least. Uh, however, we provide you with a, a plethora of resources beyond that uh, so that you can read uh, you know, further and, and gain even more understanding about the, 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 the topic that you're studying. Um, again, at the very end of the page, we provide a link off to the TALUS reading list uh, that I, I mentioned earlier. Um, so uh, again, giving you a, an easy way of accessing the uh, university's li library resources and the and the and the resources that we have linked within the module. Um, however, you could, for instance, you could go to the you could uh, navigate to the university library yourself and also learn how to use the search functionality there because that is also a use a useful skill as a student as well. Um, then I'll quickly jump through to week six. Um, so um, typically uh, in, in the final the final weeks of, of a module, you would have a, a final assessment. So um, in this case, we have uh, in, in, an individual assignment over here. And in here, we, we will give you an assignment brief and you work your way through that assignment brief and you submit your um, your submission at the at the very end of the page. And that then signals to your lecturer that you are ready to take um, or that your assignment is ready to be um, graded. Uh, and your um, your your lecturer will then start that process. Um, we do make use of Turnitin on all uh, on all assignments, so uh, we do we do um, check for um, academic academic integrity and, pl and plagiarism and such, and um, that that is all automated within the back end of the learning environment. Um, and I think the last thing that I will say is that we also have a, a a very concise end of module survey for all students. So as you finish a module, you can provide us feedback with um, any, anything that you have liked or even disliked. And we we really take that feedback seriously and uh, we we do our best to implement any of those changes on the learning environment uh, for, for future iterations. So it, it, re it really helps that uh, students provide us uh, with that feedback and we continue to iterate and improve on the learning experience for, for you as a student. And then... One last uh, small little thing I'll add is that we have a support widget at the very bottom of the page that you can access from any any uh, any page within the learning environment. So you'll see there's a, a small support widget on the uh, on the right hand bottom of the screen. Uh, and what is very useful here is that um, this widget provides you with support throughout your module. Um, and let's say you had some questions about uh, how to submit assignments, you could uh, very easily uh, type your question in the search for help area, such as a question like um, how, how to submit an assignment, and you will find um, a, a a bit of an overview as to how you um, how you could uh, how how to submit an assignment. So we provided some materials and resources there. So if you are ever um, ever, ever have a question about how to uh, how to do something on the platform, we have a whole variety of different resources in the different sections and and such and then from this area as well uh, you have access to our student support live chat and if you click on this live chat area over here it opens a widget and you're able to fill out your details and have a uh, you're able to engage with the live chat with our student support so if you experience any issues throughout your studying uh, you have any any concerns or questions uh, beyond uh, the academic questions which would normally go to your lecturer our student support team are, are, are the team to contact and um, they they do an incredible job at supporting you throughout your studies with any any problems or any questions that you might have but yeah i think that is uh, that's me for today and thank you for being here and um, thank you for listening to to my part of the presentation it's uh, it's been wonderful to see how many people are here today and I, and I and i trust that we will see you here in the future
Thank you so much, Andy. So uh, we're now to Courtney, and she will give you some more inf information on the admission process and, of course, uh, all the insight on how to apply and to start your journey with the University of Liverpool. So, Courtney, the floor is yours. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so thanks, everyone, for joining with us today. I'm going to talk you through just now um, some of the steps that are required if you want to make an application to one of the programmes that Ida has spoken us through just now, um, and just some other information about the application process that we uh, feel it would be important for you to know. Um, so can I have the next slide, please? Perfect. Um, so if you would like to apply to one of our online programmes, you will need to complete an online application form that will ask you to provide some personal information such as um, so just basic personal details um, and also the programme that you wish to apply for and most importantly the start date that you wish to apply for. Um, and then just a sort of general overview of your background such as um, previous academic qualifications um, or sort of previous work qualifications, professional qualifications that you would like to add in. This information will just help your assigned admission advisor process your application as efficiently as possible and be able to provide you with the best service possible, okay? And then following that, we will also require um, certain supporting documentation um, that we would need you to upload with this application form, such as um, photographic ID, which needs to be valid and in date and also must have a date of birth on it. Um, then we do need an up-to-date CV that has details about each of your roles and responsibilities in both past um, professional work experience and also the present per professional work experience that you're you're participating in. And then we'll need copies of all of your educational certificates um, and certified translations if that's applicable to yourself, as well as any, any other sort of professional certificates that you feel would support your application um, to the programme of your choice. Um, so that would be sort of any undergraduate certificates um, and any master's previous certificates or postgraduate certificates that you may have um, that you wish to, to be considered for your application. Following that, we do also need a personal statement of between 300 and 500 words. And that'll just include a little bit about your motivation for studying the programme, a little bit about your previous experience and how that perhaps relates to the programme if it is relevant. And then a little bit about your future ambition with this qualification and in regards to your career. And then finally, for our international applicants, we do have a requirement for you to provide evidence of English language proficiency. Um, for some students, that can be met by providing um, some kind of high school level grades in English. Um, but for most of our applicants, we would request that you are able to provide um, something that is equivalent to an IELTS academic test score. So whether that is the IELTS academic test itself or something that's equivalent to that. And that test must be no more than two years old um, so that we're able to, to properly assess your English language ability. But if you aren't able to um, offer us any of those uh, documents themselves, then you, we do offer an online English test that you can take as part of the admissions process. You would just let your admissions advisor know that you're not able to provide any of that English language proficiency proof in the form of a document, and we will be able to set you up with one of our, uh, our test accounts. OK, um, can I have the next slide, please? Perfect. Um, so with the admissions process, and this is just sort of a step by step guide of how it would be. So first of all, when you either make an inquiry about one of our programmes um, by requesting a brochure or um, some sort of documentation, or when you make an application, you will be assigned a personal admissions advisor. And that admissions advisor will be um, able to uh, help you through the process. As Ida has said already, they're able to give you um, sort of personal um, advice or guidance on, on what programme perhaps may be best suited for yourself and for um, your previous experience. Um, as I did said, there's a couple of, sort of programmes that are designed more for um, beginners and someone who's looking to transition or um, convert into a field of, of study and then there are some that are more specialists so we would be able to um, give you some guidance and advice in which program we feel would be best suited um, to, to your skill set um, and then you'll also be able to um, send us any additional documents if you if you do miss them out of your of your application form it's okay if you do miss them out or if you do remember something later on you can just email that straight to your admissions advisor and they'll be able to add that to your file and they'll also be in charge of looking through your documents and just making sure that they are all suitable. So, for example, that your ID is in date or that all names match up on your certificates, just so that we're able to provide proof that um, those are your documents and to get you through the application process as quickly as possible. Um, and then when you are ready to apply, um, you will do so directly on the website. There is no fee. It's a free process and it's very easy to follow. 
And then once you have submitted your application, it will then be reviewed by one of our admissions advisors, um, who, as mentioned, will ensure that all your documents are suitable and eligible for review. And then when your app is as strong as possible, the um, assistant managers and, your, uh, and the director of studies will conduct a final review just to make sure um, that you are eligible for the programme and to ensure that all documents are correct and in order. Then once approved, if approved, um, you would then be issued with an offer letter, which, con uh, which confirms your place on the programme and then will let you know what the next steps are. We do um, offer conditional offers um, in certain circumstances. So if your offer is a conditional offer, then it will confirm the conditions of your entry and when these need to be met. And then obviously, once you provide and meet those conditions, then you will be offered um, an unconditional offer to the programme. Um, once you have received that unconditional offer, we will require you to accept your place on the programme by filling out our online acceptance form and then to make the deposit um, or the full payment to the programme to secure your place. Now, this must be done before you start the programme so that we are able to um, confirm that you will be attending uh, the, the programme itself. This deposit will cover your first month of study if you choose a monthly payment plan, um, or it will cover the full tuition fee if you choose to pay um, the full tuition fee up front. So nothing further will be due until you begin your studies, um, if it's a monthly payment plan, and then you will pay the next instalment the month after that you begin. Okay, next slide, please. Perfect. So the tuition fees for the 2022-23 academic year are as follows. So we have the postgraduate award programme and uh, this sort of this specific qualification is only available for two of our programmes. So it's available for the um, International Business Law programme, so the LLM and also the Healthcare Leadership. Um, it will be five months in duration and the total fees are £2,550. Following that, we have our postgraduate certificate programme, which is 10 months in duration and will, uh, will cost £5,100. Then we have our postgraduate diploma programme, which is 20 months in duration and will cost £10,200. Next slide, please. And then we have our master's programmes. So the uh, Master of Science programmes, they will all last about 30 months and the full fee for those programmes is £15,300. Now that is the same for our Master of Public Health programme and also our LLM programme. They are all £15,300. And the only one that differs in our master's programmes in price is our Master of Business Administration programme, which is £21,000, but they do all last 30 months. Um, if you wish to pay in a monthly, payment plan, um, then this will just be divided uh, equally by the total number of months of study, whether that is uh, sort of five months, 10 months, 20 months or 30 months, it'll just be divided equally um, by the number of months of study. Um, the monthly payment plans are, are available for all of our programmes, so you would just speak to your admissions advisor about that and they would be able to give you a little bit more insight into it. Okay, um, we would just want to let you know that um, if you are looking to apply to our October intake, then the fees for the 2023 and 24 academic year are changing. Um, so we would just request that you look at the website or inquire with one of our admissions advisors to find out more, okay? Um, and also just to let you all know that uh, these tuition fees are shown net of any applicable um, international sales tax that is applicable in your country. Um, so this is beyond our control and unfortunately it, can be it can't be altered. Um, so just speak to one of your admissions advisors if you're not sure, sure about any of this information and they'll be able to let you know which additional fees would be due okay. Um, next slide, please. Perfect. Um, so in terms of fees and funding, we do offer um, certain scholarships or discounts that are available for some students. Um, so the scholarship that we offer at the moment is a regional scholarship of up to 15% um, and that's available for um, students depending on their regional location um, and they're applied automatically depending on your country of residence. So there's no need to apply for them separately. Your admissions advisor will confirm if you're eligible when you apply or when you inquire about one of our programmes and that would then just be applied automatically to your payment plan if accepted onto the programme. We do then also offer a 5% discount if the tuition fee is paid up front, so if it's paid full. Um, this is often a preferred method for employers, so it may be beneficial to those of you who are potentially looking for employer funding to speak to your employers about the possibility of getting that 5% discount if they do wish to pay up front. 
And then we do also have a, uh, an alumni discount. So if you have previously studied at the University of Liverpool and have graduated with a qualification from the university, then you can benefit from a 10% discount on the tuition fees. And something that's just not on the screen just now, but that I will add, is that we do have an executive scholarship for our MBA programme. Um, it's a 15% scholarship, but it can't be used in conjunction with our regional um, scholarship. So you would just have to inquire once again with your admissions advisor, and they will give you um, more information about that, uh, that programme. But these um, scholarships and discounts that are on the screen just now, um, they can sometimes be used in conjunction with one another. So your admissions advisor will give you a good guide um, to what qualification, oh, sorry, to what um, funding you are you are eligible for um, when you make your inquiry or when you make your application. And we'll be more than happy to talk you through um, the way that that all functions. OK, um, that's all from, my, from myself, I believe. Um, yes. Perfect. So, uh, of course, thank you so much, Aida, Arik, and Courtney for the uh, insight and for the presentation. I'm sure it has been helpful to all the participants who joined us today. And of course, for those of you who may have joined in later, do not worry, you'll have access to all of the content we've just presented. Uh, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, write in the q &A box. And speaking of that, I see that we already have uh, quite a number of questions. So I would like to start with the Q&A. Um, so a participant is asking what coding language will they learn in computer science um, in, in the master's? Is it for mobile or geared gear towards the desktop? Thank you so much. Hello, it's mostly for desktop. Um, so we mainly use Python because that's a good basis for everything else. So once you've mastered that, then uh, other things um, come into play. Um, but we're also using Prolog um, for some of the web development um, elements, um, as well as scripting languages like JavaScript and PHP. So um, so there will, um, some of the other lectures and you might be encountering different things during modules and things might be updated as we develop the programs as well but um, python is probably the one that uh, is the one that we start with for the programming programs programming modules sorry thanks thank you so much Ida. so a participant is also asking about what are the subjects included within the masters in academic practice so were those programs are mo very highly aligned to the uh, advanced HE curriculum. So we'd be looking at learning and teaching uh, elements of practice. There's a peer assessment element. Um, we're asking students to do an action plan on their um, on reflective elements of their own teaching practice. So it's it's very much building on uh, Brookfield, on, um, on elements that you will find in terms of um, inclusive uh, education and um, it's uh, the pro the uh, documents on the our admissions website will have more information, but it's it's really designed to think about your learning and teaching practice, and then as part of the program, you will be expected to put some of your elements, your learning and teaching practice, into testing, and then report back to the rest of the group about how those how those are working. I'm not sure that answers the full question, but um, I'd be happy to take that outside too if we'd like to provide more information on that. Sure thing. So if the participants who asked this question has any further questions about the uh, specific subjects, of course, you will get the email address and you already have some contacts to get in touch with the university. Um, to move to the, next, to the next questions, a participant is asking if the mental health psychology master's addresses online therapy. No, it does not. Okay. Um, so, uh, Pujita, I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, for the Masters in Digital Marketing, what is the assessment structure? Is it individual-based or uh, is it teamwork? Um, what about the exams? Thank you so much. I'm really glad you've asked that question. Um, we have very little examination. In fact, most programs have no examination at all. It tends to be uh, module work, um, essays, as a type work, group work, presentations, reports. So um, there's only a couple elements of very small tests or examinations within the programs. Uh, you can expect to have group work presentations, uh, for example, feature a lot. So we're trying to make sure that any work that you do within the programs themselves, you can actually then take to your professional environment immediately. And uh, so we're looking at what 
kind of skills you'd be expecting in, in a business environment and then building those into the assessment strategies themselves. So, um, so you won't expect a lot of examinations, if any, and I don't believe there are any examinations in the International Human Resource Management, for example. So, um, so it is very, uh, there's a lot of element of reflective practice too. So asking you to think about your own practice and how you might uh, improve your own practice within your professional environment. Thank you so much, Ida. So a participant is asking uh, if there are any intakes in September or October this year. I think this was important. Um, yes, so we do have um, an intake for most of our uh, subjects in October. Um, they, it may vary per date. Most of them start on the 10th of October, um, but the Master of Business Administration does start slightly later on in the month. I do believe it's the 25th of October. Um, so there's just there's two different dates, but we do have an intake in October, yes. Thank you so much, Courtney. So a participant is uh, saying that they have a CTSA certificate in cyber security and they wanted to engage in uh, a master's in cyber, cyber security. Are there any programs available uh, for that? And I think this is yours. Yes, sorry. This is, um. yes, we have the MSc in cyber security, so that would be ideal. Perfect, so that's great news. Uh, so we have a question, uh, question from Donna. Uh, I'm assuming uh, she, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, she or he is asking, I would like to know more about the MA, um, uh, if you have any online MAs in the field of education, especially English as a second language. Right now I'm working on my master thesis about leadership and education, and my interests are mainly uh, in English and leadership. The academic practice might be helpful. Um, so uh, it's not about English so much as learning and teaching generally, but um, the modules that lead up to the masters concentrate a lot more on leadership rather than learning and teaching. So I would certainly recommend that one uh, to think about because uh, as it, you, there'll be the learning and teaching practice, which you're probably already working through at the moment, but you can, I'm sure you can extend that to a higher level. Um, but then as the as the diploma develops, those are the leadership and management elements that might be of interest to you. Thank you so much, Ira. Uh, so Alkis is asking, if I understood correctly, organizational psychology is not accredited by the British uh, Psychological Society. If yes, how does this affect our professional profile, i.e. does it put any limits in the types of positions that we can apply for? It may do. It will depend entirely on your professional context. So in a UK environment, the BPS, uh, the British Psychological Society, is, is really important. In other countries, it may not be. So it, it really depends on your own professional context. Thank you so much, Ida. So Tamanako is asking, for the Masters in Data Science, uh, Artificial Intelligence, how many hours per week are we expected to put in for the learning? That's a really good question, too. Um, the, all the programs should be about the same, and that is 18.75 hours um, a week. So the, U, you, the UK um, calculates the number of hours students are supposed to send per, spend per each credit. Most modules are 15 credits, which would equal 150 hours work of weeks of work over eight weeks. And um, so that's the calculation. So if it's a 20 credit module, then it would be 200 hours worth of week of work, but that would be over 12 weeks. So it's between 18 and 19 hours a week is, would be expected for all the programs. Perfect, thank you so much. So another question from Donna for Courtney. Um, They're asking, as long as I have a bachelor in English language, is it necessary to have other evidence um, of English proficiency? Um, so that, that can be accepted. We would require an official letter from a university, so from a higher education institution in that you've previously studied at, so that we are able to, to see that the, the programme has been taught in English um, and that all the teaching was done in English. But once that's been submitted, then yes, we can submit that to the Director of Studies. Thank you so much, Courtney. So a participant is asking how many students actually graduate from the Computer Science Masters? if we have that information? Um, we've, the programs themselves have started uh, just recently. So our first series of 
graduates for the new students will be coming through and there'll be a cohort of around 50 students for that but the programs obviously are growing so the cohorts will get larger and larger perfect thank you so much Ida and from the same participants they are also asking how does the schedule look like I assume uh, on a weekly basis and if there are any breaks during the online academic year yes we have um, examination boards throughout the year in which grades are ratified. Uh, so students will get not only mark feedback after, work, after they finish their summative assignments, so those are the, the assignments where students get marks that contribute to the final classification, to the final result. But then there's also formative activities where students will uh, get feedback on, mar on work that doesn't formally count towards their classification or towards their degree certificates. So there, there's both, but um, we do turn around, we do try to turn around marks and feedback within seven days of the submission of coursework. And, um, and the, uh, students should find out quite quickly how they're doing on the program. They, and they can always ask the lecturer and um, there's really good support through the lecturers and our student support team. And as Enrique mentioned, we can, the students can see the lecturers through their office hours. So you can actually talk one-to-one -one with your lecturer during that time. Thank you so much, Ida. So John is asking, assuming acceptance, which student loan company must I submit the acceptance of registration to? Courtney, I think this is yours. Um, so this obviously would depend on country of residence. Um, obviously, I'm I'm not sure where where John is is is, pre, is where he's, he's from at the moment. international, but unfortunately, he did not specify the country. So okay. John, if you're still with us, feel free to your country of uh, residence. Mm -hmm. um, so most of our um, our students will will apply either internationally or, or they'll apply um, nationally and they'll apply from within the UK. Um, within the UK, it's um, a very sort of simple process of being able to go and speak to Student Finance England or Student Finance Wales or Student Finance Scotland, whichever sort of location you are currently residing in, um, and to request an application form for you to fill out and then submit. Something that I would just let international students know is that online programmes are not always approved for um, student loans at postgraduate level um, if they are uh, if they are conducted fully online. Um, so that is something that I would encourage all international students to, to do some research on before making an application, obviously just because it can set you back. If you do find out later on that you are not eligible for um, a student loan if it's an online programme, um, but uh, our, our admissions advisors have knowledge about this this process, but we unfortunately we don't have knowledge about every country in the world, um, so we're maybe not able to answer all of your questions regarding um, the, the fees and funding, but it is something that is easily accessible when you, you search for it on the internet, so we would just encourage you to do some research in that. Um, if you do have the opportunity to do so beforehand, but if you do reside in the UK, then we would just ask that you contact Student Finance England to find out which postgraduate loan you would be eligible for and then to make an application. Thank you so much, Courtney. So, uh, Fulgencio is asking, uh, if I apply for a certificate level, can I proceed to an MSc if I change my mind? Yes, provided you're passing you're, you're working successfully through the program, yes, you can then transfer it to the full MSc or to the diploma, depending okay. on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. That's great news. And um, another participant is asking if there are any, uh, if there's a minimum of uh, years of work ex experience that uh, participants need uh, to fulfill the application criteria for a postgraduate diploma course. Sorry, could you repeat that? Yes, I think this is for Courtney. Um, so they are asking if there's a, a minimum number of years of work experience required to be able to apply to a postgraduate diploma course. Um, so obviously each of our, our programs has a different um, entry sort of requirement um, that, that's associated with it. Um, so in terms of numbers of years of work experience, it would just depend on the entry requirements for that, for that program. Um, the entry requirements remain the same regardless of which level of the of the program you're applying for if you want to apply to um, the full master's degree or if you want to apply to the postgraduate diploma um, so work experience would potentially be required for some of our programs especially if your um, sort of degree sub, if your degree is uh, your undergraduate degree sorry is is under a certain um, 
overall level or grade, and then we would potentially require some sort of relevant professional experience. That is something that we would just ask you to discuss with your admissions advisor in a different inquiry so that we're able to help you on a personal level, perhaps send over your CV so that we can look through that with you um, and give you some better um, sort of, I guess, well-educated advice um, on which programme would be suitable. Thank you so much, Courtney. So in the meantime, John wrote that he's from uh, Middle East. So uh, about this student loan um, company. Um, so I would just uh, just recommend that, that you, you do some research individually. Unfortunately, we don't have information about all of the student loan companies that, um, that exist and that are in function, but we would just request that you have a look around and you see, um, and quite often they'll have a list on their website of universities that are accredited by their um, student loan company. Um, and you might find that they do state that online programmes are not covered or they are covered. But then once again, it's just a case of inquiring with your admissions advisor upon application. And then we can speak to our finance advisor, our finance department and see if there's anything that they can advise us about better. OK. Thank you so much, Courtney. So a question from Bethel. Um, They're asking if you accept uh, a PGTE from Nigeria um, as an admission requirement into an MSc in uh, any of the courses just introduced. I think this is for you, Courtney. That's fine. I wasn't sure if Ida was going to go for it, but there we go. Um, so I think, it, again, it would just depend um, for most of our programmes. If a, a if a student is able to to meet the entry requirements in terms of their academic ability and their their previous academic achievements as well as their work experience, then obviously we're able to create a file that we can send off to the director of studies for further review. Um, it's not the admissions advisors that make the final decision, so obviously we are only able to guide as far as um, sort of the admissions process. But we will be able to to look at CVs and previous academic certifications and in different documents that you send over to guide you um, better in in that decision making but it will be the director who is able to look at the um the equivalencies between the U uk grades and um, international grades to then make a decision on acceptance onto a program thank you so much courtney um so uh Kujita is back with another question um they are asking if for the msc in digital marketing uh, regarding the teamwork if students are located in different time zones, uh, how will they be able to cope with the projects? Where possible, we have students in similar time zones work together, so they group together. Um, but to, to be honest, most students make provision and um, it's not a pro it's not generally a problem. So uh, we have enough students on, the, on each of the modules that they can we can divide them up suitably and um, and people do work on time, different times anyway. So uh, we haven't found it to be a particular problem. A lot of the work can be done offline, of course, asynchronously. So even if you're working as a group, as you would do working online in a professional environment, you might be responding through a discussion board or through other asynchronous activities. Perfect. Thank you so much, Aya. Uh, so unfortunately, the time for the Q&A session has come to an end, but I would still like to take one last question. Uh, so a participant, uh, is asking if um, they took the A-level English general paper in 2019, uh, and they're asking if that means that their English proficiency will not be accepted since it has been more than two years. Now, generally, the, the sort of rule with the two years is to do specifically with the IELTS academic tests or to do with um, the sort of TOEFL tests, anything that, that is taken that is, uh, that's approved within the university. Um, in certain circumstances, we are able to accept school grades um, for high school level assessments um, or exams as a type of English language proficiency proof. Um, however, it would just depend on the programme that you had applied for. For example, with our Master of Public Health programme, it is recommended that someone produces an IELTS academic test or that they sit the, uh, the test within the university um, so that we're able to assess the um, English language level, but obviously it will just depend. Um, so you should, um, again, just send all of your documents to your admissions advisor so that they're able to review that. And then with the director of studies, they can review it further. Um, but it is in certain circumstances that would be acceptable. Um, it, it would just depend on, on um, sort of the, the programme that was applied to. Perfect. Thank you so much, Courtney. And thank you once again, Aida and Arich, for the presentation and for the uh, information that you've just shared um, 
today. So of course, uh, while this event is coming to an end, uh, for all the participants who join us later, uh, do not worry, keep an eye out on your inbox and you will receive a recording via email. So you will be able to access the recording of the event and of course the PowerPoint presentation uh, that we've shared today. And to those of you who ask questions uh, that were left unanswered, uh, you will of course get the um, details and contacts to reach out to the university yourselves. So we hope that uh, this has been useful into guiding you and into giving you some perspective and what your options um, can be uh, with the University of Liverpool online. And of course, I'm uh, really happy to uh, have moderated this event. I, I hope that it was uh, useful for all of you. And once again, I would like to thank uh, the panelists on behalf of Liverpool uh, for, for their, their presence here tonight. So uh, without further ado, thank you all so much for being here. And I, I hope that everyone stays safe. And hopefully we'll see you again for the next event in partnership with the University of Liverpool Online. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much and until next time. Bye-bye.